Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can get Grosten, which is the stone material from the Ashlands, early on in the game. This one material will allow you to craft all sorts of new, really strong, durable pieces just with a stone cutter. Most Ashlands resources are quite hard to get, but this stone is doable not just one, but many different ways. We're going to be focusing on this source throughout the video. These spires that spawn all throughout the ocean near the Ashlands terrain. While each Valheim world is not exactly the same, there are some patterns that we can learn. If I were to bring a ship here, I would be totally fine, because you can see that this water is actually blue, whereas that water right there is red. And as you can see here, in some places, the spires overlap, and you can actually take a regular ship up to a spire. But this is going to be limited. There's only a couple of these spots per world. I've checked a couple of seeds for these special locations, and they tend to occur in these regions that I'm highlighting here. You can find them manually yourself, by going all the way south in a regular viking ship, but not going into the red water. Because as soon as you go into the red water, your ship is going to start to take damage. To illustrate exactly what happens, I'll back up a little bit here. It's now taking a little bit of damage, and there's that creaking noise. That's how you know you're now in the Red Sea, and you can't be here very long because this boat is going to get destroyed. But by just using a simple Viking ship and knowing where the Grauston comes from, you'll be able to harvest Grauston and use it in your buildings way before you beat the Queen in the Mistlands. So, more realistically, we need to learn how to actually harvest the Grauston using the Viking longship in the Red Sea itself. The Ashlands terrain itself is incredibly dangerous, and I strongly encourage you not to go there. But the spires, there's only two kinds of enemies at the spires. And if we just arm ourselves lightly, really all we need to defend ourselves is something to shoot frost arrows with. And as long as we have that and we're patient, we're gonna stay alive as long as we have frost arrows. It may sound crazy, but the spire part of the Ashlands is actually a lot safer than the Ashlands with regular terrain. And now we're gonna get into how you can go harvest stuff there without having to go progress all the way through the Mistlands. I learned how to do this on the no map, no portals world, but most of you play with portals, which will make it even easier. All you'll need to do is set up your typical portal at a base, and then it's just a matter of getting a portal set up on one of these spires in the Ashlands that we saw earlier. This Grauston isn't metal, there's no limitations on it, so you can just take it through the portal. So that's a way out. Technically, we only need to get there. We don't need the ship itself to survive. So to get started, you'll need to bring a longboat, and really you want to have some backup ones in case you die, you're going to come back here. So here's everything you need to get your Grauston mining spot set up for the first time. Take around 200 wood. We'll be using the wood to make some platforms that make mining the Grauston much easier. After all, this boat is a one-way ship, therefore we'll be needing some platforms so that we don't drown in the ocean. And that's where all this wood comes in. In addition to that, you really want to make sure you have some kind of pickaxe and a bow that allows you to shoot the frost arrows. As long as you can shoot frost arrows and you're patient, you can kill all the enemies that you'll find in this area. The exact spot you end up using doesn't matter as much in this case. It's not so much about the Ashlands itself as it is can you find an area that's safe and really close to the Ashlands. So the goal in this strategy is to set up a base in a black forest that's visibly close to the Ashlands border. So you'll have to get this all set up before you even consider doing this. Don't just sail into the Ashlands and think you can set this up on the first try. You might need to try two or three times. So set up this forward base in a space that is safe and close to the Ashlands border. Here's a quick snapshot for you of the basic inventory you'll need in your boats to get started. And the main reason that this works is because the boat takes damage in the Red Sea 
but the crates that remain afterwards don't get damaged, nor do carts. So you could load up a bunch of carts of material, and then go crash it into a spire, and they won't take any damage in the water, unlike the ship. Now, we want to be able to make some decent distance to be able to get to the spires. So as you can see here, this boat probably won't make it, because I don't have the wind at my back. So don't try the journey unless you actually have the wind at your back. Otherwise, you might not even make it to the spires. You also might consider sailing down the border of the Blue Sea and the Red Sea until you find an area where you can see some spires off in the distance. This is going to be a great spot to go through with the wind at your back. However, as I mentioned earlier, it's not going to be so easy all the time. Occasionally, you'll aggro the serpents and some of the flying monsters from the Ashlands. But normally, by the time you crash, you're going to be able to run up onto one of these spires. Don't be too picky, just go for the first spire that you find, crash the ship into it, and run up the spire. The spires usually have a particular shape, so you're going to go to the back and then run up to the top of it. And now you have to make sure that you don't get killed by whatever you aggroed on the way here. We're going to take care of this serpent, making sure that he doesn't kill me before that. It may take a while, but as long as you stay up high on the pillar here and you use it for your protection, then you'll be able to chip away at the serpent's health and any of the flying monsters that you might encounter. I got lucky, and I only aggroed one serpent, which is pretty good. Now, at this point, we're essentially trapped here on this rock, but this is the Grostin that we're trying to farm. Our boat has by now fallen into pieces, and you can see that the pieces of the boat, including the cargo crates, are floating peacefully in the water. The water won't kill you instantly, but if you stay too long in it, you'll get killed. So, be careful. Before you get in the water, you want to make sure that you know where you can go to get out of the water. Notice how the ocean swells up? That's your chance to get onto these jagged parts of rock here, allowing you to climb out of the ocean and be safe. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I was tired of the really dim lighting, so I changed it so that you can see what's going on now that you know how to get here in the realistic lighting condition. And that's it. That's all you need to do to gain access to these spires. But this is really temporary so far. We have a really unprotected portal, and what you would want to do is actually mine into the rock, and then place some of the portal inside of it. But do be careful when you mine things, because mining makes a really loud noise, and you're going to aggro all of the flying enemies in the area. So make sure that you look around and you shoot them before they get to you. That way, they're a lot easier to take care of. Just mine a little cavity inside one of these pillars, and then build a workbench and place a basic platform inside. This is going to give you enough safety to get started by placing a stone cutter. Now that you have your stone cutter placed and you've mined some Groston, you'll be able to actually build with it. And in this area, you'll routinely get picked up by the water and put back down. You just get used to it. That's what you get for coming into the Ashlands before you're supposed to. If you were placing a portal here, you would want to protect it a little bit more. A general rule of thumb is you shouldn't be able to see the sky. As long as you can't see the sky from the chamber the portal's in, then it's going to be safe enough. There's no monsters in this area that come crawling onto these rocks. You only have to deal with the flying vultures and the slithery serpents. And that's it. That's all you need to get your access to Groston and start making new building materials without having to progress all the way through the Mistlands. And if you like this video and you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server using my link jpvalheim at zap hosting. This is a great way to experience Valheim because you can make a server and run it the way you'd like to play this very customizable game. For those of you who are interested in this sort of thing, I encourage you to get a dedicated server, whether it's with my link or anyone else's. It's really an experience worth trying out, especially if you know some other people who might be interested in joining you. If you'd like to watch another Valheim video, then consider liking this one or another video about Valheim on YouTube, and then YouTube will start to recommend more of this kind of content to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye bye